Well, now let's take a look at certain pathologies and what their chest x-ray or their chest radiogram may look like. First, what we want to see after we've talked about a normal lung is let's take a look at a pneumothorax. As you look at this closely, what you'll see is that one side is a little bit more black. Now that black is going to be described, as we mentioned before, that means too much lucency. In other words, the x-ray is able to get through too much, and therefore that would be called hyperlucency. Compared to the normal side, which would be described as radiolucent, or radiolucency noted there. And so that's the first dead giveaway, just blackness on the one side. But there is another point of evidence here. If you look very closely on the pneumo side, the collapsed side, the side that's black, what you'll see is very faintly in the middle is a curvy line. Now these can be called curvy or curly B lines, and what that border represents is that's the edge of the lung tissue. Notice that the lung tissue does not necessarily collapse all the way or into oblivion, it's still there, and so you can see the edge, and that's more evidence that that's a pneumothorax. You could also see a shift of the trachea away from the hyperlucent or the pneumothorax side, so the trachea would also shift in that case. So so that's a pneumothorax. You don't need to be an expert, but should they show that to you on the exam, that's how you can tell. All right, so let's get rid of the pneumothorax, and now let's talk about pneumonia. That would be another very common one that they could show you on the exam if they decide to show you an x-ray at all. Now remember, with all of these, they can also use words to describe. That's perhaps more common, but just in case you see it, we need to be familiar with them. As we look at pneumonia, the key here is what's called consolidation. And consolidation is just a collection of fluid or secretions, and it's going to come off as white area. And it's usually white area in a certain pocket. It's not all over the chest. It's in a specific area. Most commonly, it's going to be in the bases. And most commonly, it's going to be in just one of the bases. So you're going to be looking at both of the bases bilaterally and looking for the obliteration of the costophrenic angle. Remember that angle is supposed to be very, very sharp. But if it's filled up with a whiteness to it, then that's consolidation of secretions. And that's the very definition of pneumonia. Now, it could be bilateral pneumonia, so you could see consolidation in both sides, and that would be bilateral pneumonia, bilateral consolidation. But more likely, it's going to be on the right or the left. And frankly, the right side pneumonia has to be, is generally, a little bit more common. Why? I don't know. I'm sure there's a good reason for that. But it's either right or left-sided pneumonia if you see that consolidation. Now, here are another couple of chest x-rays. These are probably less common. You, My estimation is that you won't see them, but just in case, we always want to have you prepared. And one is pulmonary edema. And here it is. Pulmonary edema looks very interesting. It looks like something, well, it just looks like somebody put some cotton in the lungs. Because of that, the main description for pulmonary edema is fluffy, scattered, fluffy infiltrates. It doesn't just look like the whole thing is really rather fluffy. And so as you look at that x-ray, that's key. Fluffy infiltrates, if they say that, and it looks all like there's a bunch of cotton in there, and that's when you might think that that's pulmonary edema. Now, we'll get rid of that one. Let's talk about ARDS. ARDS is also very, very difficult to just look at an x-ray and tell, but you're going to look at it, and there's just a couple of elements you hear, see here. It does also look radiolucent, and it kind of looks like fluffy, but it's a little bit more splotchy. In fact, let's take a look at both x-rays. As you see over here, you have pulmonary edema, which looks really, really fluffy, but over here, that also looks kind of fluffy, but can you see it's a little bit more splotchy? We're going to describe that as scattered patchy infiltrates. If they use those words, then that's ARDS compared to pulmonary edema. Now at this point, if you're following along in the book, there are a few more x-rays that we show you. It's not that you have to know how to look at those and diagnose those perfectly. Once you be roughly familiar with them, but I think there's a very low chance that you'll see those as an x-ray on the exam, but we have a few facts about different pathologies that you need to be familiar with. The other thing I just want to mention is that if you really want to see what pneumothorax looks like or right-sided pneumonia, something that's very valuable is go beyond just looking at the x-rays that we've shown you and do something like gig on Google, search images, just look up right-sided pneumonia, and you'll probably see a thousand images of pneumonia. And most of them will look the same. Some of them will look a little weird. Some images will be incorrect. But there's something special about just looking at a bunch of right-sided pneumonia images lined up that you look at a bunch and just kind of go, 
I know what I'm seeing there. You'll see the commonalities there. And that's true of every one of the diseases. So if you want to learn more about fluffy infiltrates and pulmonary edema, well, just Google that. Look at a thousand of those images. Maybe not a thousand. You probably just need to look at 10 of them. But they'll line them up and you can learn a lot about chest x-rays. But perhaps more important than looking at a chest x-ray and diagnosing the patient, on the NBRC exam, what's especially powerful are the words or the descriptions they'll use. Because of that, we have a couple of things that you need to study, and that is this table of descriptions. This table of descriptions is going to show you words that you might see on the exam or even in a chart on a patient that would help you understand precisely what the patient's problem is. And so you may be familiar with some of these words, like the word reticulogranular or honeycomb, pattern that would be associated with ARDS. But you also may see something that has a concave superior border or an interface or a concave interface. They may use such words and that's when you think pleural effusion. Then if they use fluffy infiltrates, we've already talked about that one, that would be pulmonary edema. Mm -hmm.